Talking about treatment changes when we have an autoimmune condition can be a minefield of emotions. Let's be real, we'd rather be almost anywhere else than our rheumatologist's office talking about yet another medication. But sometimes this is exactly where we find ourselves and a lot of times we're discussing biologics. Biologics are a group of medications used in autoimmunity that have moved the needle substantially in our ability to control inflammation. This does not mean, however, that starting one is always an easy decision. Today we're going to talk about what biologics are and when you should use them, why your doctor may recommend them to you, and some key questions you should ask so you can feel confident in whatever decision you make. I'm Dr. Elizabeth Ortiz and this is Connected Rheumatology. Let's get started. So let's start with the basics. What are biologics? Well, biologics are a classification of medications that are produced from the biological material of living organisms. Scientists isolate certain proteins, antibodies, or other parts of the cell and use this material to create a drug that has a certain desired effect. These medications are used in lots of different conditions, including autoimmune disease, cancer, and diabetes. In rheumatology, these medications have introduced a level of specificity and targeting that previously wasn't available. The first biologic therapies used in rheumatology was for rheumatoid arthritis. This gave rheumatologists a tool that was specific for RA as opposed to the handful of medications that we were using and that we still use today that are effective but not particularly specific. In rheumatology, we further define biologics based on the protein it targets. So, for example, we have TNF-alpha inhibitors. These are medications that target the TNF-alpha molecule. We also have anti-IL-1, IL-6, and et cetera, et cetera. You don't need to know all the different classifications. But it is because of improved research techniques that scientists have been able to better understand what's happening in the immune system of those with rheumatoid arthritis and has enabled them to then build treatments based on those findings. So research showed that TNF-alpha was very high in rheumatoid arthritis patients. They then create a medication that targets the TNF-alpha. They test it and find that it works wonders. This basic playbook has been followed for all the biologics. Science shows us what is off or not working in any particular autoimmune disease, and we can then develop a medication targeting that problem. In rheumatology, we now have biologics for rheumatoid arthritis, psoriatic arthritis, ankylosing spondylitis, lupus, polymyalgia rheumatica, vasculitis, and myositis. They mostly come in injections or infusions, and because of this, they are often approached with fear. Because surely, a medication that has to be given by injection must be super strong and dangerous, right? Well. Like most things, it's a little bit more complicated than that. So how did we end up here? Why will rheumatologists make a recommendation for a biologic? If you find yourself having a conversation with your rheumatologist about a biologic, you most likely have been around the block or two with your condition and have already tried one or even a few different medications. Your doctor may bring up a biologic, however, for just one reason. They believe your condition needs it in order to control your inflammation. Whether your doctor explains it or not, they do have a treatment strategy they are following when they see you. And the strategy is simple. Get control of the inflammation as quickly and as completely as possible. The reason this is the strategy may seem obvious, but I do want to emphasize that this is not only to help you feel better today, but to protect you from the long-term harm uncontrolled inflammation can cause to your blood vessels, your heart, and your brain. So each time they see you in the clinic, they are thinking, is this person's inflammation controlled? And if not, what can I do to control it? Now, I just want to address the elephant in the room that seems to always pop up in my comment section. Yes, it is true that most of the tools the doctor has in their toolbox to control your inflammation come in the form of medications or pharmaceuticals. Are there other non-pharmaceutical tools that can help bring down inflammation? Absolutely. And we'll get into how to think about those and weigh all your options later on. 
There are two circumstances where active inflammation isn't the issue, but the risk of inflammation might be high, and so biologics are then brought up. And that is when either you are having side effects from your current medications and can't continue to take them, or you are reliant on prednisone. These are two instances where technically your inflammation may not be out of control, but it is assumed that should you stop the medication causing the side effects or they stop the prednisone, which you really don't want to have to be on long term, that your inflammation will come back and you'll need something to control it. If you find yourself facing these recommendations and need insight or want a second opinion, I am now taking virtual second opinions for those in California, Texas, Florida, and Tennessee. This can be useful if you have blood test results you need explained, you haven't gotten a straight answer in regards to a diagnosis, or you're facing a new treatment choice like a biologic. You can learn more through the link that's in the description box. All right, so here you are. Your inflammation is high, either the medications you're taking aren't working or they are causing side effects and your doctor has recommended a biologic. What kind of information do you need to feel comfortable with making any decision? Well, obviously, like I always say, only you know what you prioritize and what information is really going to help you make that decision. But I do have some suggestions. First, I would recommend making sure you are on the same page as your doc in regards to the state of your condition. It can sometimes come as a surprise to us that our doctors think we need more medication. This is usually a result of mismatched priorities and goals, and the biologic talk is a great time to talk about it and get on the same page. You could simply ask, what markers are you using to judge that I need to be on more medicine right now? Usually, the answer is going to be blood test results or swollen joints that they see when they examine you, but it's good to get this clarity. If you disagree with their opinion, meaning, despite whatever data they have telling them that you aren't doing well, you feel like you are, you need to tell them. Tell them why you feel like you're doing okay. This will give your doctor insight into your daily life, what is acceptable to you and what is not. You can gain some insight too into what improvement, if any, you may gain by making a treatment change. So let's say that's actually not the issue. You agree that things are great and you would like them to be better. Is a biologic the answer? Well, let me just say, most of the time, there are multiple ways to skin a cat, meaning there are options. So then the question becomes, what other options are there and why do you think this biologic is the best option for me right now? There are some circumstances where there may not be another viable option or where time is of the essence, but most of the time, you're gonna have choices. Asking, what is the risk if I don't take this recommendation and don't change my treatment? That question will give you insight into the potential risks and you can use that information when making your decision. And then of course, you wanna open the conversation to non-pharmaceutical options. Is there a role for diet or lifestyle changes or really any other non-traditional therapy I might be interested in in helping control my condition? We all know the answers to this question can vary widely. The answer depends on your condition, its severity, and unfortunately, the bias of your doctor. The way I look at it is, most autoimmune conditions will benefit from making diet and lifestyle changes that support lowering inflammation. But that really isn't the question. The question is, how quickly can those lifestyle changes create an effect, and how severe is your current inflammation? And then finally, a question that you probably don't need me to remind you to ask, as it is the most common question I get when I'm having the biologic discussion, and that is, will I need to be on this forever? The use of the word forever can bring up a lot of fear and emotions, and although I'm a big believer in feeling your feelings, I would recommend reframing this question. Once I start this medication, when can we discuss either coming off of it or lowering the dose. There has been a lot of research in the area of tapering biologic medications and the best time to discuss your situation and your doctor's point of view is in the beginning. As you can see, there are a handful of questions that could create a good, but not short conversation with your doctor and it's absolutely okay to take some time to think about their answers, get in touch with your own goals and then decide. 
Too often, we feel like we need to make a decision right then at the five minutes we have in clinic. The system doesn't necessarily help as getting follow-up appointments isn't always easy, but unless you are in one of those circumstances where time is of the essence, I recommend standing your ground and taking the time you need to make a decision. It's very easy to ask for a virtual follow-up or a follow-up phone call in two to four weeks to discuss your decision and the best next steps. Biologics can be scary. Anything that involves needles is not considered a good time. And this just adds insult to injury because again, we often wish none of this was happening. As with any health-related decision, we can only make the best decision we can with the information available. So in order to feel as confident and comfortable as you can, get the information you need to make the decision that's best for you. If you're interested in learning more about the rheumatoid arthritis treatment strategy, I recommend watching this video. If you happen to live in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, I'm now open for new patients and you can learn about that in the description. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.